Okay, so this lesson is going to deal with uh, finding the distance between two points. All right, now there is a very unique way about going about this, and it's not measuring between the two points because you could measure this and then maybe I change it like this. Okay, now measure it. Okay, well, you're going to get something different that you measured. So let's look at this. Uh, what we're going to do is use the grid here, okay? So let's go ahead and connect these two points. All right, so we've connected these two points. All right, so what we want to focus on is uh, the lines that these two points are on. So let's look at the grid lines that uh, these two are on, okay? So we've got the horizontal lines. But then in addition to that, we've also got uh, these vertical lines, right? So here's our vertical lines. We've got our horizontal lines. Okay, and what do you notice about this? Now, some of you can see that uh, by doing this, what we've done is we've made a right triangle here and a right triangle here. Okay, so we get to choose which one we want to use. And uh, it's very general for people to use uh, this one, this right triangle. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay, so we got this right triangle. And uh, yes, it's going to be very important to remember the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's look, take a look at that as well. All right, so there's the Pythagorean theorem. And even more importantly is being able to find the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, now let's go and look at the formula for finding the length of the hypotenuse, right? You need the square root. The hypotenuse is the C. And do we add or subtract in the square root there? Well, this is the hypotenuse, so we need to take the sum of these. So we're going to add, and it's the square of each. Okay, so this is a right triangle, and it is related to the Pythagorean theorem. The thing is, is it's always going to be the hypotenuse, okay? So let's look first at this vertical side, the up and down change. So how, how long is this line, this one right here, right? So we're looking at our purple line here. How long is it? Well, you got one, two, three, four, five. So this is five units long. Let's go and make that a little bit bigger so it can be seen. This is five, okay? What about the red one? See, so we're looking at our horizontal change, and you can see that it is one, two, three, four. So this is four units long this way. All right, and we can simply put these into this equation to find the length of the hypotenuse, and uh, that'll give us our answer there. And some of you have already done that. Yes, C equals the square root of 41. And you can find the decimal value of that using a calculator, uh, the calculator of your choice. Now, in some cases, you'll see that it is, uh, it's, it may be important for you to find the actual coordinate pairs of each of well, you'll have the coordinate pairs of two points, and then uh, you just find the difference between the vertical change and the horizontal change. Or, in other words, you'll find the difference between the x's and y's. Square those, add them together, and then take the square root of that. So this is, this is what I mean by that. Okay, so let's look at this example. We've got two points. And so let's first find the change in the y's, all right? So... From negative 6.3 to negative 2.3, okay, it's the difference. So we are going to subtract these, but some of you have seen, yeah, you got minus this negative. So this actually becomes a plus right there, right? So the difference between these is 4. Okay, now, yes, it's negative 4, and as it turns out, that's not going to matter. So let's just keep that negative 4 for now. All right, let's look at the changes in the y and the x's rather. So we did this one minus this one. So we're going to have to do the same thing for this. Negative 1 minus 4 
is 5. All right. So to find the distance between these two, I'm just going to take this negative 4 and the 5, just like I did in the last example. I'm going to take the square root of these. I'm finding the hypotenuse, so I just need to square them. Okay. So I've got negative 4 squared plus 5 squared. And that will give me my answer. I have the square root of 16 plus 25 which, just like we saw in the last example, is the square root of 41. And again, you can find the decimal value of that. Uh, the book should tell you if you need to round this to the nearest tenth or if you should keep it in this uh, square root form. Now, we could graph these as well, all right? So, for example, we could graph this. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 1, 2.3 would be right about here. And then we've got negative 1 and negative 6.3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.3 would be right about here, okay? So, once again, we just need to make this a triangle. And you can see this is a right angle. And the change in y's is 4. Changes in x is 5. And you do the same thing there. Okay, take the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared, and eventually you would get the square root of 41 once again. So distance for this one is the square root of 41. So yeah, the book, once again, they just put this into a decimal form, and of course they've labeled it in units, and that's fine. So in the last one you could have labeled it the square root of 41 units. All right, so this one comes with a graph. So maybe you want to use the graph. Maybe you just want to find the difference between the x's and y's and then find the square root of all of that garbage, all right? So take a second and see if you can do this one. All right, well, let's look. This is another way you can look at this, all right? So let's connect the x's up. I'm sorry, let's, let's do that on the bottom. So we'll get rid of that. So we're going to connect uh, the x's on the bottom and connect the y's on top. So again, we're always going to go from left to right. Okay. So to get from 1 to negative 2, how far would I have to go? Well, that's going to be our first number here. Okay. So this is the way I start my formula. I can see that to get from 1 to negative 2, I would have to go down 3. So I've got down 3, and the change in y would be up 1. So this is just a positive 1 there. Well, if I continue this, i got negative 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1 squared, is, which is 1, which would give me the square root of 10, and this would be the distance. Now, if you were to find the decimal value of this, um, looks like this may be 3.1, 3.2-ish, something like that. All right, this is the formula for finding the distance between the points. Again, it's just using the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. And once again, if you just connect the x's, then connect the y's, and you take the square root of those numbers squared, you'll get your answer. So a lot of this stuff is just there. I mean, it's all very mathematical. You got x sub 2 minus x sub 1, that quantity squared plus quantity y sub 2, and so forth. Okay? All that stuff, uh, it looks a lot more complicated than it is, but again, if you just do what we just did there and in the last example, you'll be fine. All right, this one has a couple different parts to it, okay? So each unit, it says, is 0.1 miles. So that's the last part that we have to worry about. What we first need to consider is the distance between these two points, okay? So let's set up our distance formula. It's going to be addition, and we're going to square these. So let's look at the x values 
from 1.5 to 2.5, I would have increased by 1. If I look at the y values, I'm going from 4.5 to 3.5, which is a decrease of 1. Okay, now again, the negative isn't going to matter because we're squaring it. Uh, and a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive because there's an even number of negatives. So 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So this gives us the square root of 2. All right? And this value in terms of a decimal would be, I don't know, 1.3, 1.4-ish uh, maybe. All right, so to round it to the nearest thousandth, I get 1.414. Now remember, back here, it, it told us that each unit in the map is 0.1 miles. Well, it's 1.414 units away, so I'm just going to multiply this by 0.1. And that'll give me my final answer in terms of miles, okay? So I've got uh, 1.414 times 0.1, and that gives me 0 0.1414 in miles. And I'm done. Okay? Now this, this is what we would call a scale factor here, this 0.1. It's... It's uh, on a map, but in actuality, they would be this many miles apart. But on the map, they're just 1.41 um, units or grid lines away.